Okay, so right now, um, I'm going to assume you know how to scan the upper and lower arch, okay? Um, this video is really going to just talk about how to take a bite relation for an occlusal guard. So if we're doing it for a, um, you know, for orthodontics, usually we're going to take an incentric or like, or in, uh, in, in their mass, maximum intercostivation, however that you want. But this, for an occlusal guard, I think it's really important to take it in the bite you want to use for the actual orthotic. Because if you don't, um, you're relying on a computer or a um, or a uh, articulator to, to simulate this. And why not just go ahead and capture the bite where we want? So I'm going to be using a leaf gauge. And so a leaf gauge just allows us to bite, open the bite up however much we want. Keep in mind, for the full arch guard, we want, if, if it's going to extend full arch, we need at least two millimeters, maybe a millimeter and a half, two millimeters between the posterior teeth. And the rule of thumb is, Whatever you need in the back, you need twice that in the anterior, basically as far as how much to open it. So if you want two millimeters in the back, you're looking at four millimeters of opening a pin on an articulator. Now, we're not doing that. We're going to be basically putting these little leaves between the mouth. So it's not easy to say, oh, I always want four millimeters because of how deep their bite and how their anterior teeth couple can vary. But that's what I'm kind of starting with. So I just take a good two thirds of it, open for this, close together. And I always have, I, tr I would tell them, Close together, slide forward, slide back, squeeze. Slide forward, slide back, squeeze. And I'm doing that, I usually do about five times, anytime I want to get a true centric relation by trying to relax those muscles, relax the joint, so that everything seats where I want it to be. Not forcefully, but go forward, go back, and squeeze. And now just hold that there for a second. And I'm checking to see if she's got enough disclusion, and she does. Uh, maybe even a touch more than necessary, but I think I'm going to go with that. So she's just going to hold on to that, and her job is just to hold still. I'm going to be pulling her cheeks out of the way. You want to communicate that? Even though I moved your cheeks, hold your teeth still. So now I've got this. I'm going to go ahead and grab my camera. And I'm using the CareStream CS3600, but whichever one you're using, ideally it can scan two bites, one on their side. Stay together. Because it's an open bite, it can be a little tricky because you've got dead space between the teeth. And I'm going to tell you a trick on how to adjust for that if you need to. I'm going to trash that one. I can tell I just don't like it because it doesn't seem to stitch very well in those lower premolars. So. And so it, it is important to go ahead and actually look at those just to make sure it doesn't look like they're it's a terrible stitch. It's a little better, still a little bit off, but between the two of them we should be good. All right. And that's it. So um, I'll, I'll go ahead and we're, we're done with showing you how to do it because how the computer processes it doesn't matter. It's different, different standards are, are going to behave differently. But one of the things that's important is if you are struggling because your camera really struggles with the dead space between the teeth and it can't stitch from jumping from the upper to the lower, one thing you can do is take a normal bite registration in this position, take them out, cut them right down the middle, put them back in the mouth, and then scan them, because then you're not gonna have that dead space in the opening of the mouth. You're gonna be able to scan the upper teeth, bite registration material, and lower teeth, okay? Again, that just cuts out the dead space, the blackness of the back of the mouth. So I think that's about it. Um, yeah, that's it.